three, two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. We're only two hours late. Fans starting we're the stream. Only two hours late. Fans starting we're the stream. Only well, welcome. Two hours late. Fans. Oh, there we go. Okay, yes. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. Uh, yeah. So imagine trying to troubleshoot uh, four old Star Wars games from the late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, at kind of at the last minute, so that's my fault. Um, but welcome everyone to HeroQuest fans, everyone listening, whether we're you're checking us out live on Twitch or watching the replay on YouTube. So it's about it's a little after 4 p.m. Central Time here. We'll be going for two hours. That's the plan. And then around six, I'll be meeting up with the Strange Bus and Triv from Jedi Knight Discord. And we'll be uh, kind of doing some more PC troubleshooting, get our systems going for some vintage Star Wars games, Jedi Knight series. And around 9 p.m. Central Time, Strange Bus is going, and he's going in full throttle. So we're going to try to join him. I'm going to try to do my own streaming thing here if I can. If not, I'll just be participating in his stream. But if you can see what's on my screen there, we are going to be doing some more Dave Morris uh, novel, interactive novel. These are... Uh, reading these are game books so yeah so we got our four heroes here these are the four hero quest heroes and of course these are the models i was working on trying to make the eyes look a little less goofy on these figures i got some some better brushes so he's got the bug eyes the crazy bug eyes isn't that fun but yeah i think eventually i'm just going to strip the paint off these and i'm going to paint my 3d printed ones and then just see, look how goofy that is. I thought, ah, I'll just give him a beard and mustache. Yeah, he's got crazy eyes. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take my 3D printed ones and paint those. And then I'm going to strip these and just have them just be the basic red. Because I like that. I like the basic board game colors and everything. But if it's 3D printed, I have no problem just, just painting it. And I mean, these came painted and I like the job they did. But I, I want to do it myself. I want to teach myself how to do it. And I mean, these are basic paint jobs. And I, I like the colors and everything, but um, I bet I can do better. I bet a lot of us t could do better. Do better. There's the dwarf. That's autofocus. Good old autofocus. Let's get that elf again. Yeah. So anyway, no nothing too special. I like how um, they kept the base the right color. I mean, not that you'd ever mistake this for any other figure, but the fact that it's a hero, it's red. So it's already there. You, it's not like, you know, painted some other color. So anyway, that's just how I choose to do it. How you choose to play Hero Quest. So these are the classic heroes. Now, The Fellowship of Four by Dave Morris. This was the first Hero Quest novel. So it was a big deal when it came out in the UK. Hey, we got Strange Bus. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, so uh, quite quite a delay on the on the stream, but I think it'll be worth it. So welcome to not uh, Mr. Beast contest. <laughs> welcome. Um, yeah, so on HeroQuest fans, what we try to do is usually I ramble on about HeroQuest lore on Fridays, and then on Saturdays I try to actually play a game. Now it's not always just HeroQuest. It's a lot of times it's these interactive game novels. You know, it's like basically it's like a choose your own adventure type book. But it has actually stats and character sheets in here, and you roll dice. So I got my I got my uh, six-sided dice, and I mean it can be any die. It just I just chose to use these because they're more gamey, I guess. You only need one one six-sided die, standard. Um, and then I'll play games like Space Crusade. I like Space Crusade because you can play against yourself. But now that we are doing a little bit more with Discord. We're growing a little bit. We actually have people that participate in the live chat. So I just want to invite you, if you want to go to the Discord stream, you are welcome to call in to the show. Um, now, if you're on a smartphone, I, I can't uh, necessarily help you there because it might not be that good. But um, it is possible that we can chat more or less with a little bit of a delay and you can interact. But yeah, my, my thought is as I'm reading this book, we'll come to various points where there's choices. And if you have a suggestion, go ahead and type it in either the Twitch chat or the Discord chat, or if you're watching it on YouTube, sorry, it's not live. Um, you can just follow along, see what we did. But let me just grab, um, 
let's see, I'm just going to give you the link to join the Discord server in the chat. So if you want to join us, and of course, you're welcome to join us anyway. But if you want to talk to us live on Twitch, uh, you can. And once you're in Discord, all you got to do is go to, it'll say uh, voice channels and go to Quest Talk. That's Quest Talk. There's general talk also, but in Quest Talk, you can actually talk to us. So if you, if, if uh, somebody pops in there, please let me know so that I can start chatting with you. So feel free to join us to interact live if you wish. Okay, so smaller group today, but hey, I don't blame you because I was not on at the appointed time. And I'm running two copies of Twitch. I don't need to do that. So yeah, the Jedi Knight series, a lot of fun, but a lot of troubleshooting required to get it running on modern systems. I mean, you can play it through Steam. You can play it through GOG. Um, and there are mods out there. There's there's actually people out there on Discord that'll help you get it running. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of troubleshooting. Now, Jedi Academy and Jedi Outcast are a little nicer just because even though I don't have as much nostalgia for them, um, they're running on the Quake 3 engine, so it's a lot easier to get things running. And I do run a Jedi Academy dedicated server called uh, Kurgan's Meat Grinder, which has been running for years and years and years. But if you can find it, uh, you're welcome to join us and play later tonight. But anyway, let's get right into it. Let's get into the Fellowship of Four Hero Quest. And I did show you, uh, you got a glimpse of my screen a second ago. So this is actually what... Yeah, I threw this up in paint.net. So we've got these character sheets, and they're modified from the from the board game. So they are a bit different. But let's say, let's give us give ourselves a brighter color there. So let's say I want to uh, write on here. I think I can just go ahead and just write. I'll just give myself a layer here. So let's see. So the barbarian is going to go first. This is how you play it. So in this book, there's actually four heroes. So when we did Tyrant's Tomb, it was the barbarian only. And it was the wizard only for uh, the Screaming Skull. But in Fellowship of Four, you got all four. So the barbarian is going to go first. And then we're going to have the wizard second. And so I'm just using my little pen here. And yeah, there's some preset stuff. So the Barbarian gets what they call a Bastard Sword, which was... I know there's different definitions of that. Uh, like a one and a half hand sword. The Wizard starts with a dagger. And here they gave the Wizard the Earth Spells, Fire, and Air Spells. So they gave the Elf the Water Spells which I usually gave the elf in the board game. I usually gave him the earth spells, but whatever. Now the elf, they only gave him a sword. What type of sword? Short sword? Whatever. But yeah, the wizard's second. Elf, we're going to say, is third. Because yeah, four heroes, so this is going to take a while. They say that you can play this with more than one book, but I'm just going to... I'll be the, I'll be redoing all the reading, and I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to influence my choices. And cheers, Dead Gamer. I'm going to take a swig of water. So the elf gets uh, the three water spells. Sleep, water, feeling, veil of mist. The wizard gets everything else. Just like in the board game, each spell can only be used once. And they have slightly different effects, so I may have to flip back in the book. Uh, the dwarf gets a battle axe, and he starts with a money pouch of 20 silver pieces. Now, big thank you to Dave Morris, the author of these novels. So this one is from 1991. And he released all the novels free online. Um, so if you want to go to his blog called Fabled Lands, you can get them for free. You can download the PDFs. I mean, it doesn't have all this fancy artwork. It's just got some kind of generic artwork inside it. But it's still pretty cool. And, I mean, all the content is there except for the... This, this uh, particular novel didn't actually have 
a hero quest quest if that makes sense it didn't have a board game like quest in here it's got a narrative which we're not going to read but it's it's fun to read and then there's a choose your own adventure in here so the name of this adventure is in the night season and those of you who have seen our streams where we did tyrant's tomb and we did uh, the screaming skull i'm not going to repeat everything with the rules because it's kind of tedious but once you get the hang of it it's not so bad basically uh, you're going to roll to parry like when you're fighting somebody you roll to attack you can only parry if you've got a weapon fleeing i mean who wants to flee but if you run out of body points you're dead and it's loosely based on the european rules so you got the four heroes now speed you got speed you've got combat speed and combat are stats you didn't have in the board game but see, there's there there it is in the actual page. I didn't want to mess up my book too much. Yeah, the wizard's got heal body, rock skin, pass through rock, tempest, swift wind, genie, ball of flame, courage, and fire of wrath. So there you go. Okay. And you don't get to name them in this one. I mean, you can, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the barbarian has five combat and three speed. Of course, you want these numbers to be higher because you have to roll that number or less to succeed when it gives you a speed roll or a combat roll. Dwarf has four combat, three speed. Wizard has three combat, three speed, so he's the weakest. And the elf has four combat and four speed. All right, so we're going to start here. And periodically, I may switch to this and just kind of like draw on it if, if we need it. Oh, yeah, and there's limited carrying capacity in this version. In these in these books in these game books so the barbarian has can carry three items and his weapon counts as one the wizard can only carry two items his dagger counts as one of course he's got all those spells to make up for it the elf has two slots and one of them's taken out by a sword and then the dwarf has three slots and he's carrying the money and he's carrying the battle axe so he's got one slot left all right let me just grab a throat lozenge because i anticipate i'm going to be doing a lot of talking here yeah, the other day I was doing a lot of uh, spring cleaning, helping out some family with uh, spring cleaning. Otherwise, I would have been a little bit ahead of the game here, but you got to do what you got to do. All right, so let me just check the stream here. <laughs> Deviating from the timeline. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, as far as Strange Bus, I mean, he, he is a great... Uh, lover of Star Wars games in general, but he and I have fondness for the old Star Wars games, so before the dark times, before Disney. Not saying that everything they've ever done is, has been garbage, but let's just face it, there were some really good games in the past that have not been surpassed yet. So yeah, Jedi, Jedi Knight, aka Dark Forces 2, aka JK, <laughs> uh, Mysteries of the Sith, which was the expansion, Jedi Outcast, aka Jedi Knight 2, and then Jedi Academy, aka JKA. <laughs> we had all these names for these games, but they're all first person shooters with uh, lightsabers and force powers mixed with gunplay. Fun single player, uh, fun multiplayer, and people have just played it fanatically for years, including myself, but I'm pretty rusty, so I have no doubt that I'll get uh, the, you know, owned, as they say, pwned, as we used to say. But yeah, this is the this is the Hero Quest stream. Best game ever. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, we won't get into Star Wars on this stream because otherwise we uh, won't have anything to talk about next time. Just kidding. But yeah, um let's uh let's get into the novel here. And we'll just we'll just get you all up to speed. So, the Hero Quest adventure game. In an ordinary adventure game, you take the role of a single adventurer. This one is somewhat different. HeroQuest features a fellowship of four adventurers, wizard, elf, barbarian, and dwarf, and each has different skills. If you're playing this adventure solo, you can take the part of all four adventurers. Alternately, find some friends who also have copies of the book. Well, it's free online. Each of you can then adopt the role of one of the fellowship. And see, if the links are down, you can actually just message Dave Morris and he'll send you like he'll just send you a link to the PDF from a Dropbox. So I'll skip over the rules of the adventure. You should know this already, but if not, that's okay. You can still enjoy it. So yeah, a lot of people like to listen to my stream while they're doing other stuff. I understand. Um, 
So you don't have to interact if you don't want to. If you want to lurk, that's cool. Thanks for supporting us one way or the other. But yeah, so all the magic is being used by somebody. You just have to... I modified the turn order because I'm thinking like, okay, the barbarian gets to go in first, but then the wizard can cast a spell and then, you know, he could cast it on the dwarf. The dwarf gets to go, or if he casts it on the elf, you know, and then the elf is last. Maybe I should put the dwarf last. Yeah, I'm going to change it. So despite what I wrote on there, let's say the elf goes after the wizard. So our two magic guys are going to be sandwiched in the middle. The dwarf is going to go last. Now, if there's a trap that we have to disarm, I don't think they put that feature in this version. Because normally you'd, you'd want to maybe put the dwarf in the middle just so that he can disarm a trap so that you can walk through. But they don't they don't even mention that in this version. So let's, uh, let's just back up a little bit here. Got Barbarian Wizard. Yeah, Elf Dwarf. Okay, that makes more sense. So actually, I had it right. Sorry. Okay, back to the story. Because that's what you came for. Yeah, so we're playing Hero Quest. It's in book form this time. So yeah, this is 1991. Released in the UK. All right. Page one, it begins. Your travels have brought the four of you to uh, Knocklore, an eldritch country beyond Blackfire Pass. It was from west of this wild wasteland of fells and fens that in ancient times the king of the dead sent his legions against the living. Could that be the witch lord? <laughs> well, enough commentary. All right, king of the dead sent his legions against the living. Fortunately, he was defeated by heroes of that bygone era. There are those who say he lies buried at the heart of one of the granite tors that you can see thrusting up from the barren moorland. You turn away from the window, preferring the cheery warmth of the inn to the bleak moonlit landscape outside. As you sup your ale, however, uh, you cannot help noticing how quiet it is in the taproom. None of the locals seem at all curious about you, even though it must be rare for them to meet people from more than a few miles away. Rather than ask you about your adventures, they just sit in silence, staring morosely into their mugs. The door bangs open, and entering along with the cold and autumn's dead leaves comes a tall old man in a shag coat. He forces the door closed against the rush of night wind, and then crosses the taproom to converse in low whispers with the landlord and some of the elders. From the sighs and grim shakes of the head, you deduce that some very weighty matter is being discussed. Eventually, the tall fellow fetches a cup of mulled ale, and brings it over to stand by the fire. He looks chilled to the bone and deeply worried. If you ask him what's going on, turn to four. If you decide to mind your own business, turn to 15. Well, I think this one's a no-brainer, but I'm going to monitor the chat here. So as you are thinking of options, I want you to tell me your thoughts on what we should do next. Should we talk to the old guy? Or should we just mind our own business? Welcome, Striker667. Hey, we're starting to get a piece together. Yeah, we, uh, we're we starting a bit late today. Sorry about that. There's more games uh, coming tonight. We were trying to do some troubleshooting. We got a lot done, though. I think the games aren't running perfectly, but, I mean, before they were... Basically, we were going from zero to, like, you know, 100 miles an hour. Some of them need to be at 200, but... I think he'll do a good job. He has a great stream. You should have a timer for responses. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Strange Bus. I like that idea. I like it. <laughs> mind business. Okay, well, he's saying we should mind our own business and not talk to the old guy. I mean, who knows? He might be evil, right? Striker, what do you think? Should we talk to the guy? I'll be the tiebreaker. There's three of us. Okay, why did I put my finger in front of the camera? I'm not sure. So should we talk to the old man or mind our business? If nobody says anything, we're going to go with Strange Bus's suggestion. Because, hey, you know, we can read it. Talk. Okay, so Striker says talk. Strange Bus says ignore him. I say talk, so that's two votes. Sorry, buddy. You'll have to spam me with the concussion rifle later. All right, 
ask what's going on, turn to four. I mean, if we get killed right away, we can always just replay it. Okay. At your invitation, he eases himself onto a stool beside your table and introduces, him, introduces himself as Douse the Glim. <laughs> Douse the Glim. A local wise man. In my younger days, I used to sort out messes of trouble hereabouts, he tells you. These days, the old bones creak too much, though. Well, that certainly wouldn't allow you to sneak up on monsters, would it? You, you don't say that out loud, though. So, you ask, what's all the commotion about tonight? Oh, a bad business, and that's the truth, he says solemnly. He gives his cup a lugubri lugubrious look, and then adds... Have you noticed that a poor, lonely sight an empty ale, make, ale mug makes? <laughs> okay, so he's just the local lush. All right, if you buy him another mug of ale, the dwarf must agree to this since it's his money. Turn to 26, if not, turn to 37. Okay, so maybe Strange Bus was right. Uh, this guy might not really be <laughs> a wise old man. He might just be a, a drunk. So should we buy him some more? We've got 20 silver pieces. I have no idea how much the liquor costs at this particular establishment. Let's talk. Okay. Um, yeah, but should we buy him more more beer? Don't buy anything. Get up here and drink yourself. <laughs> it's like you, you, you go, talk, old man, or you're not getting anything. You can have a sip of this if and only if you start uh, telling me what, what, what the heck's going on, man. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're not gonna not gonna get him a drink. Need you clean and sober, sir. All right. He goes on peering into his cup for a while, and then drains the dregs and says, "Have you not heard the legend of the old manse? I'll tell it to you. Grim Dougal lived there, a man with a soul as squalid as an adder's." When he died at last, not a souls would venture within half a mile of the place. But those that did were never seen on this earth afterwards. Bogles, shees, and fritlings are but the least of the hobgoblins that abide there now. Why would anyone even think to try their luck, you ask? Why? Because of Dugold's treasure, of course. His cask of gold was heavier than his cask of silver, and his cask of rubies was heavier still than that. Rich pickings for anyone not afraid of a bit of danger, and that's as true as I say it. Well, it's a good thing we didn't get him another drink. This guy is a little, uh, a little excited. <laughs> you reflect on all this. Certainly you could do with some coins to fill your sagging purse. Well, see, that's always the problem for the adventurer. You know, you're, uh, you're always strapped for cash. All right, so let's go to 49. Not a lot of action yet, but we're just getting started. We'll do it, you cry. We'll go to the old man's this very night. Your announcement is greeted by the other villagers with a sort of enthusiasm they might give to someone who had just declared themselves to be carrying the Black Death. <laughs> they stare at you slack-jawed, then hastily set down their mugs and set off home. As each of them passes your table, you get his... Uh, to get his coat from the pegs of the door, he gives you a grave look and crosses himself before scurrying out. Just as you're heading out of the inn, you bump into a peddler who is parking his handcart outside. Should we... Okay, if you stop to talk to him, go to 60. If you hurry past and head out to the moors, then 12. Okay, so it sounds like we should get some more information, but should we talk to the peddler or just, just get, get going? I should be looking at Discord here, too. All right. Yeah, I like the timer idea. It's like if nobody responds, go ahead and do it. Okay, so I'm just going to make an executive decision if nobody has any thought on this one. Um, let's just talk to the peddler. Go about your business, Je Jedi business or hero business. Okay, so Strange Bus thinks that we should just go ahead and head out to the moors. We don't need any info. I mean, we can always get up to speed later. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? All right, let's just head out then. So we'll go to 12. It's kind of like the first time you read the book, you could get all the info. And the second time you, you already know it, you're just, you're just psychic that way somehow. 
Okay, you make your way out across the moors. The moon shines as a white gleam behind heavy shutters of cloud. Looking ahead, you can see three possible routes. See, this would be like a Bob Ross thing where he's like painting the picture while you're reading the book. Looking ahead, you can see three possible routes. One is a stone lichway that passes by a number of ancient burial mounds. The second, used by carts heading to and from the market, leads over the moors to the town of Ithjorn. Ithjorn. It skirts a ruined castle which many believe is haunted. Classic. Alternately, you could take the path that winds through the Misty Hollows. I almost said the Misty Mountains. Different franchise. Okay, so we take the Lichway, take the cart track, or plump for the path through the Hollows. So Misty Hollows, the well, well-worn path, or the Lichway. That's with the burial mounds. So I'm thinking ghosts, I, I have no idea what... I guess townspeople, and then I'm not sure what would be in the hollows. Scary, scary creatures. But the thing is, we got four heroes. We got a party here. We got as much uh, muscle and magic that we could ask for. So we should be ready for anything. So it's just a matter of which which one. Eeny, meeny, money. I don't even know. This is the first time I've read this particular adventure, so I don't, I'm not sure which one. Let's see, the Lichway, the Burial Mounds. I mean, we're trying to find treasure. A tomb, you'd think, might have some treasure in it. It's probably not the final place, but there could be zombies or skeletons or anything. Through the Lich? Okay, that's Striker's vote. The Lichway. See, I know how to sell it, don't I? Okay, let's go to 23 and see what we got. We only got two hours to try to complete this. Oh, someone posted something in the Twitch. Oh, yeah, I forgot I'm not in streamer mode. That's okay. I kind of like the little uh, beep. It tells me I need to pay attention. Okay. The Lichway is a path of old flints, now more than half sunk in turf. It was used by ancient tribes carrying the bodies of dead chieftains to their burial ground. Sure enough, before very long, you can see a number of low mounds to the side of the track. These are where the ancient chieftains lie buried. Passing close by one of the mounds, you see that the jagged stones that seal the entrance have sagged outwards. With a little digging, it should be possible to break through to the tunnel leading to the central tomb chamber. If you want to spend a little time excavating the mound, go to 71. If you're keen to press on, go to 69. See, it's always a tough choice because, on the one hand, are you a grave robber or are you an expert treasure hunter? Are you going to get some lost buried you know relic from some evil bad guy or are you gonna disturb someone's rest and have a vengeful monster come after you disturb those tombs says striker see he's just it's going right for it so start digging all right any anybody else now if you're watching the replay on uh, youtube you don't have a choice but you can just sh shake your head in dismay at our decisions here it's like, why didn't they... Oh, it's so obvious. Okay, so let's do a little digging. Seventy-one. As as any choose-your-own-adventure player knows, you uh, put your finger there in case you just made a really stupid mistake. Okay, digging away the stones with your bare hands is harder work than you thought. And soon you're sweating despite the chill night air. See, it just keeps saying you. I, I assume you're the barbarian. I mean, I, it doesn't say which hero you are. I guess in your mind you can be whoever you want to be. But a, after half an hour, you have finally cleared enough of a gap to squeeze through. You peer into the interior of the mound. Facing you is a long, dark tunnel. Too low for a man to stand upright. Well, oh, but I'm not the dwarf. Yeah, because they mentioned the dwarf's money. So... Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I might be the barbarian. I might be the wizard. I might be the elf. Who's the leader? I mean, they kind of portray the barbarian as if he were the leader, but it wouldn't have to be. Okay, anyway. Um, too low for a man to stand upright. There is no smell of decay, of course. These mounds have not been used in almost a thousand years. But there is a dank, earthly odor, like soil after a storm. 
If we go ahead and enter the mound, turn to 83. If you're not having second thoughts, turn to 94. Second thoughts, come on. Should we go in? I mean, it doesn't smell. It just smells like dirt. Might be nothing in there. Might be a waste of time. Of course, what if it collapses on top of us? All four of us? Heck yeah. Okay. Let me just take a quick look at all the magic we've got. Because I'm thinking... I mean, when we played the wizard one, we had access to all these spells. But do they say anything different? So pass through rock. Allows you to move through solid walls. It only works in certain pages, though. So if we don't see one of those pages, we know that it's not... An option genie lets us open a door, attack an enemy, foretell the future so you can peek ahead just once. Heal body, rock skin. We got all these attack spells, tempest, swift wind. No, nothing's really, usually you got to wait for them to, t you either got to wait for them to give you the option to use magic or it's got to be combat, like you're entering into combat. So I guess none of that can be used yet. Okay, let's go into the mound then. Send in the dwarf. Send a droid. All right. Yeah, he can do it. He can make it. It's good underground. All right. The dingy tunnel uh, slopes down into the earth. It is only wide enough for you to go in single file. As you advance, a fetid odor rises around you like the stink of some dismal lair. A sense of foreboding jangles your nerves. And the roof of the tunnel gets lower and lower until you have to crouch, almost like animals. At intervals, roots choke the tunnel and have to be pulled aside, dislodging clods of earth. Suddenly, something brushes across the face of the player in the lead. Okay, the barbarian. It is not any mere trickle of soil from the tunnel roof. Terror closes in as a, in a terror closes in a cold sweat as your eyes adjust to the darkness. And directly in front of you, you see a clustered group of ghastly barrow dwellers. These emaciated monsters are the animate corpses of ancient chieftains. They breathe gusts of stale air, gladdened by the presence of living souls on whom to feast and reach for you with eager fingers. They will fight the first player in the battle order. There is only room for them to fight you one at a time. Because of the cramped conditions here in the tunnel, any player except the dwarf must deduct two points from combat. Oh, man. All right. So I believe the barbarian has five combats, so he's only going to have three combat for these guys. That's kind of annoying. All right. Uh, except for the dwarf. So the wizard only gets one. He's not going to be much help in the fight unless he uses magic. And let's see, elf, two, and then the dwarf is unaffected. And he, of course, he's last. All right, so the first barrow dweller has a combat of three, body of two. Second barrow dweller, combat three, body two. Well, they all have the same, third. The confined space also means the spells, apart from Fire, Wrath, and Genie, cannot be targeted from behind the first player, and fleeing is out of the question. Survivors turn to 127. Hmm, okay. Attack one at a time. So there's four of us and three of them. They will fight the first player in the battle order. I'm a little confused because it's easy to figure out, okay, so does... Well, each of them only gets to attack once. So I think it's just the first one attacks the barbarian, the second one attacks the wizard, and the third one attacks the elf. But then the dwarf gets a free attack. Let me just take a quick look at combat here, because, yeah, this is the, this is the only book that has four. And I noticed the other two books only have one. So maybe they thought it was too complicated to do it this way, and so they changed it. But it is, it is a unique feature. So the wizard is preeminent in sorcery, but we can combat. The elf is an all-around fighter, having some spells as well as moderate fighting skill. The barbarian is a great warrior, but has no, power, no other powers and is vulnerable to magic. The dwarf is strong in battle, and also has an uncanny knack for spotting traps and secret doors. Okay, well, they do say that about him. 
I was saying earlier about traps not being in this, but I don't know that for sure. And now I suspect, okay, battle order. This is the order in which they advance to battle. The adventurer in the front row, usually the barbarian or the dwarf, will often bear the brunt of attacks, which is what I planned on. Adventurers can change position in the battle order at any time except during a fight. Um, fighting. When battles commence, it takes place in rounds. Okay, that's... You must roll equal or less to your combat on one die. You succeed in scoring a hit. Enemy will also get a chance. And I think the initiative is ours in this, this point. When you fight a group of foes, you will get told whether there's room for one player to get involved in the for every player to get involved in the fight. Assuming there is, multiple foes will pair themselves off against you according to your battle order. For example, you're attacked by three orcs, then they will engage the first, second, and third players in the battle order. The fourth player can either join the fight on an orc of his choice or else stand back and cast spells from a safe distance. Okay. If there are more opponents than players, the allocation goes round again from the top. It's only possible to make one combat roll per round of battle, regardless of how many other opponents they're fighting. Okay, so that makes a little more sense. So that's not too bad. Okay, so the Barbarian is going to attack first. And he is going to attack... Let's just... Uh resize that window so it's a little little easier to manage here that looks a little better okay there's probably some drawing pad program that I should be using instead of this but that'll do for now let me just check the chat, see if anybody's saying anything. No free lunch. Send in the dwarf. Yep. Oh, welcome to Rogue Girl. Welcome everybody to HeroQuest fans. So yeah, we're reading Fellowship of Four, Dave Morris novel. And we entered our first combat. So we've got three Barrow Dwellers. So I guess these are like zombies, essentially. And so the Barbarian is going to attack the first one. And so he's got combat of three because of the close quarters so he's going to roll his attack okay so he got a two so that's uh oh there's a delay sorry about that yeah he rolled a two so he succeeded so he does one hit of damage to the first barrow dweller i'm gonna have to write this down okay so We'll just call them zombies. So zombie one, two, and three. So he just lost one body point. He's down to one. And so that's the end of, because the monsters can't do any blocking or anything. So now it's, I think it's all, all the heroes get, get to go because we got the drop on them. It doesn't say they attack first. So, okay, so let's do the wizard now. See, in the board game, all the heroes would go, and then all the monsters would go. That's how it would work. Okay, so two. But see, he would have had to roll a one to hit, so the wizard doesn't doesn't get anything. He just failed. Okay. Now the elf. I'll get the hang of it, so the next one will be a little quicker, unless we have to fight, like, 16 guys or something. <laughs> The elf has to roll a two or one or two to hit. He got a one. Okay, so he hits the second barrow dweller, the second zombie. So that one's down to one body point. And then last of all, the dwarf, who has no restrictions, he has combat of four. So he's got the best attack and he's last. He's going to attack the third barrow dweller. He got a one, so he scores a hit. So all three of them are down to one body point. So that's pretty nice. So now we're going to say the first Barrow Dweller is going to attack. We'll use the smaller dice just for just for laughs. Actually, yeah, just to keep track. Okay, so the first Barrow Dweller is attacking the Barbarian. 
six. But see, his combat is three, so he missed. He just missed. Oh, yeah, and we got to think of parrying. Okay, I'm going to say the wizard's going to try to parry if he needs to. Okay, second Barrow Dweller is attacking the wizard. Gets a four. His combat was three. He missed. No need to parry. Third one is attacking the elf. Ah, that wasn't really a roll. Let me try that again. I'm not using my dice rolling cup, so three. Okay, so he scored a hit. So the elf takes one body point of damage, and the elf is down to five. Let me just add an extra layer here for body points. Yeah, so very similar to the board game. Okay, welcome to La Kaylee, or L.A. Kaylee. HeroQuest fans today doing our stream, and we got started a little bit late, but we're doing the Fellowship of Four. Dave Morris novel, interactive game book. And we're fighting these zombies, and so they've done a little bit of damage. They did uh, one damage to the elf. And so there's only three of them, so now we're back to the heroes, I think. This is how I'm going to choose to do it. So the Barbarian is going to go. He's going to attack the first Barrow Dweller. He got a four, so he missed because his combat. Again, everybody's combat is reduced. Well, all the heroes are because he would have had to roll three or less. So now it goes to the wizard, and I don't know if it's really necessary for him to use magic yet. But this time crush the dwellers yeah i'm with you buddy definitely just move this stuff out of the way so i can actually see the chat okay okay so the elf is that right lost my place there okay the wizard Oh, the wizard has to attack. Okay, yeah, the wizard attacks the second one. Five, so he missed. Now the elf attacks the third one. Six, he missed. Okay, so the dwarf is going to attack the first barrow dweller. And he has to get, once again, the dwarf has to get... See, there's, they give you more to manage this time. Combat is four, so four or less. Three. Okay, so he killed the first one. So the first zombie or barrow dweller is dead. So that was the dwarf's kill. <laughs> you have one job. That's funny. It's funny. It's true. All right, so we're back to the monsters again. Okay, so the second barrow dweller is still alive. He's attacking the barbarian. So let's roll his die. He's got to get three or less. He got a two, so the barbarian takes a hit. He's down to seven. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Uh, third Barrow Dweller attacks the wizard. Oh, man. The wizard's going to parry. I'm just saying it right now. He's going to try to parry. Two. Okay, so that's a that would be a hit. Now the let's see to parry. Let me check the rules again because this is my first parry. So parrying. You need to roll a one or two, and if you roll a one or two, then you uh, deflect the blow. Okay, so let's see if the wizard is able to deflect. Three, he failed. So the wizard takes a hit. See, so it's not completely painless. Now, I do have healing abilities, but it's a shame to have to heal everybody. Okay, so the wizard down to three. 
Okay, well there was only two monsters, so now we're back to the heroes again. So Barbarian, come on man. Attacking the second Barrow Dweller, who's still alive. Four, he failed. He still had one job. Wizard, uh, he's going to attack. I mean, he's got a score of one. Ah, he got a one. Lucky guy. Fortune. I think his name was actually Fortune in one of the books. Actually, I think it's this book, yeah. In the narrative part, they call his name Fortune. It's either the wizard or the elf. I think it's the wizard, yeah. His, his name is Luck. Okay, so we've killed that uh, second Barrow Dweller zombie. The wizard got the kill, too. That's nice. Nice to be the wizard and get a lucky hit. A fine hit! Okay, now the elf is attacking the final zombie or Barrow Dweller, whatever you want to call him. Five. Uh, see, normally that'd be a great roll, but no. His attack is two, so he failed. Dwarf, it's up to you, buddy. You're going to have to finish him off. And he's got to get four or less. Two. So, okay, so the third zombie was killed. So the dwarf got two kills this time. All right, we're finally through those guys. Wizard doing the barbarian's work. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes the barbarian, you know, he'll kind of like, oh, oh, I, you know, I strained my muscle. I skipped leg day. And uh, let the wizard get a, you know, hit in so he can feel like he, he did something. Because normally he's just slinging magic. He's not doing any fighting. All right. Uh, so we didn't have to use any magic. Survivors turned to 127. So we killed the enemy. All right. Edging with horror past the grisly remains of the Barrow Dwellers. Yeah, let me just shut off the character sheet for a second. Edging with horror past the grisly remains of the Barrow Dwellers. You proceed to the burial chamber. It seems to take forever to reach it. The ceiling has partially collapsed, though the sarcophagus is still visible. Resting on the lichen slime stone lid is a two-handed sword. Instead of steel, it is made of a weird glossy blue-green substance and is all of one piece, including the hilt. If anyone takes the sword, decide who is going to do so and turn to 107. If not, you can open the sarcophagus, turn to 118, or go back down the tunnel and continue on your way. I don't know. Should we take the sword? <laughs> Negative mind points. <laughs> Drinks too much. You guys, I love it. Okay. I mean, the sword kind of sounds cool. I mean, what if it's one of these cursed swords or something, right? But it might be magic. Ah, Striker's like, it's cursed. On the other hand, we killed the guards. They were protecting it, weren't they? So it must be worth something. I'm inclined to say the barbarian should take it, but if he's right, maybe we shouldn't. We should just leave well enough alone. Any other opinions on what we should do? Should we take the sword, open the sarcophagus? See, that seems more of a violation than just taking the sword. Because maybe if we open it up, there's a note in there saying, uh, by the way, <laughs> don't touch that sword. It's... Uh... It's Keist. <laughs> See what's inside. And then the other option is to just um, go back down the tunnel and continue on your way. So it's like you did it for nothing. Should we, uh, should we open up the sarcophagus, Indiana Jones? See if it belongs in a museum. Welcome, Psycho Mud. So we got some new people. People are coming in and out. All right, let's uh, let's open up the sarcophagus. We're reading uh, Fellowship of Four here on HeroQuest fans. Okay, so we're gonna open the sarcophagus. I'm putting my finger there, as all Choose Your Own Adventure players do. You raise the lid to discover a scowling Spriggan. Oh, uh, we encountered Spriggans in the last book, crouching inside the ribcage of the tomb's occupant. The Spriggan. Spriggan glowers at you, twitching its spines and showing its tiny sharp teeth in a snarl, then suddenly leaps up and rushes for the tunnel. It's like a little chupacabra or something. If you wish, you can try to catch it before it gets away by rolling your speed or less on one dice. Now, when they say your speed, I assume they mean the barbarian, because he's the one in front. If more, oh, if more than one player decides to do this, make your rolls according to position in the battle order. 
if someone catches it. Oh, so we can all four of us can try. <laughs> Go to 50. See, these same guys seem to be nothing but trouble. I mean, he, he didn't do anything to us, but I don't know. Can we get information out of him? He's getting away. What is he going to do? Like warn other monsters to come after us? I don't even know what he can do. Probably a reward for not touching anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, by the way, if you open this tomb, you're in big trouble. But if you didn't, thanks for not opening it. Okay, so we sh should we go after this little creature that's running away? Stop him. All right. See, if we had a nice crossbow, it'd be pretty easy. All right, let's try to catch him. So we just have to read, all right, we just have to roll less than our speed. So actually, we were back to our normal stats because that first encounter is over. So I think we can go back to our, oh, no, our, our lost body points are still lost, but our combat, combat is, is restored. So the, everybody's lost one except for the dwarf. So, okay, so speed of three for the barbarian. So the barbarian's going to try to catch the spriggan. Catch the spriggan! After me, lucky charms. All right. He missed. Or he missed. He failed. He, he wasn't quick enough to get it. Okay. So now the wizard has to roll three or less. Hit him with Tempest. <laughs> See, now that would make sense. It really would. But is it worth... Wasting it on that tiny little creature. I mean, last time we put him to sleep and threw him in a fire. And he made a... He was like an air freshener. He made it really smell nice. I mean, he was trying to attack us. So, what, what choice did we have? All right, let's 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 try the wizard. Three or less. Six. Okay, so he didn't catch it. Let's try the elf. I think he's got more speed. Yeah, he's got four. So, he's a little bit more chance. Four or less. Two. Okay, so he caught it. So the elf caught him. Let's go to 50. Caught the spriggan. It is like trying to grab a polecat with its tail on fire. It's like trying to grab a polecat with its tail on fire. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure where that came from, but there it is. With an angry whir of fangs, claws, and spikes, it breaks free and dashes off down the tunnel. What? Come on. Its shrieks and curses are horrible to hear. It has also inflicted a number of gas nasty gashes on the player who caught it. This player loses one body point. Well, that's annoying. Okay, so the elf loses a body point. Well, darn. Maybe you were right about that Tempest thing. See, I should have listened to you. Should have listened. That's how it goes sometimes on HeroQuest fans. So... Now we know. I mean, they they don't look like they're that dangerous, but they they can certainly uh, do some damage. Okay, let's go to 61. Spriggan. The Spriggan escapes down the tunnel, chittering a series of scalp-tingling curses as it goes. Yes, same to you, buddy. Um, if now you wish to investigate the sarcophagus, turn to 38. I thought we just did that. If you're ready to leave the barrow, will you take the strange sword, in which case go to five, or leave it here? So what do you think? Um, if he was a guard, he was a pretty crappy guard. Because he ran away, like, right away. So he's probably just living there, just chilling. So should we just keep investigating the sarcophagus? Should we... See, here's the thing. If there was a trap, you would think the, the dwarf would be able to spot it. But they haven't given him any opportunity to do that. Should we look into the sarcophagus? Should we grab the sword or just head out? I mean, <laughs> I guess we're in the same position we were before. One body point. Uh, impoverished. Would that thing have picked it clean? Well, it's a good question. I mean, it didn't look like he was laden with jewels. I mean, he, he ran off without the sword, so he must not have cared enough about it. Of course, maybe he is a low-intelligence creature and didn't really know what it, what it was. Strange Bus says take the sword. Take up the mighty sword. Should we do that? Striker, what do you think? I'm kind of interested in the sword, too. I mean, if it's a cursed sword, I guess we'll find out. 
Oh yeah, the dwarf got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's take the sword. I, I'm with you on that one. Let's 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 give it a shot. You can always read it again. Okay, so that's gonna go on one of his uh, items. So he's got the bastard sword, and he's got the uh, green. I'm just gonna call it the green sword. It's tempting for a power ring or something. Yeah. I'm just going to call it the green sword. Something about glowing green swords. I always, always enjoyed those. Okay. As soon as you emerge into the wan, wan mid moonlight... You see a horrible change come over the sword. Oh, great. And now it looks like a green serpent, rigid as a poker. See, you were right. With his jaws clamped over the wielder's hand, the wielder realizes that he or she cannot put it down, and any attempt to force the serpent to let go just causes it to bite down even harder. The affected player must reduce combat by two and cannot use any other weapon until and unless the serpent is disposed of. Well, darn. Taking this setback with poor grace, you slog sullenly back to the road. <laughs> uh, oh, what might be on the body? Yeah, thanks, Psycho Mud. So, not not that we knew. I mean, none of us knew, right? I mean, Stryker had a suspicion that it might be cursed. But, yeah, it turns into a snake and bites onto our arm. So, I guess it's just... Yeah, who could have seen that coming? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so, all right. So we're back to uh, him being hampered again. To four combat. Thankfully, there's four of us. So we've still got we've still got an edge on most, most monsters. I mean, depending on what they throw at us. I guess anything can happen. All right. Sullenly back to the road. And it doesn't even say what its abilities are. It just, uh, it, it actually hurts you. <laughs> or it makes you, it makes you less effective in combat. So darn. I guess our greed was punished right away. All right, 69. At, at last you arrive at the deserted manse of the infamous Grim Dugald. It seems that you have already had as harrowing a night as any of you can remember just in crossing the bleak moors. But your perils are far from over. You look at the darkened manse, so like a mansion, with its high gables, gaping window sockets, and shroud of ivy. And the feeling of foreboding makes you shudder to your core. Still, you will not make many things make things any better by hanging around out here. You may as well get things over with. If only you knew what the things in question were. Cautiously advance along the path until you reach the edge of a wide trench that surrounds the manse like a moat. There's no water in it, but the dim moonlight brings it with shadows. Brims it with shadows. There's a kind of bridge spanning this moat. It is not like any bridge you ever saw before. However, since it is made up of thick square tiles of pale marble, which hover magically in the air without supports, the tiles are about two paces on a side and are close enough for you to easily jump between them. You notice they are furry with gray mold. It also hangs raggedly down towards the moat. If you cross by means of the hovering tiles, turn to 73. If you descend into the dry moat, turn to 85. A jumping puzzle. So in the Hero Quest sitcom, is the Barbarian the Clumsy comic relief? Well, it, it has it has uh, kind of pointed in that direction, Strange Bus. So you, you may well, well be right. I can hear the laugh track. Except for some reason, the audience, they sound like goblins laughing instead of humans. So... Go figure on that one. Well, the hovering tiles could be an easy trap. I mean, we've all played our share of video games with the old disappearing tile trick. On the other hand, they must be there for a reason. So if we just go into the moat, I mean, it could be bad stuff in there that this is allowing us to get over. So should we take the hovering tiles or we should go into the moat? Anybody have any thoughts on this? I'm going to say let's go for the tiles. If I'm wrong, well, 
and that was that was the adventure and we'll have to go back all right let's try the hovering tiles 73 tiles hopefully not slick yeah well it could be walking on the bridge is more difficult yeah walking on the bridge is more difficult than you'd expect it this is because of the uneven coating of fungus see just like you said see you know yeah tough call like i agree i agree so striker seems to know what's going on but yeah there's the fungus and the fact that some of the tiles are tilted at a slight angle see i was picturing that in my head if you have a length of rope then you can hang you can hang yourself no don't do that please don't okay if you have a length of rope then you can rope yourself together and cross without much danger if not you might prefer to climb down into the moat and get to the manse that way instead. Oh, come on. We don't have a rope. There's no opportunity to get one. Uh, if not, you'll have to use the bridge, or will you cross over at the bottom of the moat? Okay, so we'd use the slick slick bridge without a rope. I just picture somebody falling off. What if all four of us? Of course, if we, lo if we lose one of our heroes, we're going to be uh, at a, quite a disadvantage. Or cross, cross over to the bottom. I almost want to make an executive decision. I'm just anticipating, like, with healing. Normally it says when you use water of healing or heal body, I mean, you can't come back from death. If you've already reached zero, you're, you're gone. But that's that's in the European version. In the North American version, you can you can heal back from nothing. But... I mean, if they can just, since this is a game book, they can just decide to kill you all if they want to. Can your snake sword act as a rope? Ha ha! See? That's what I like. So that thing screwed us over. Of course, I'm just picturing it like the length of a sword. But you can rope yourselves together. I don't think it's long enough. You can really stretch that sucker. <laughs> I like the way you think, though, Striker. I like that. Act as a rope. Like you stretch it and stretch it and then try to <laughs> like, is it, is it like a real animal? It's only going to stretch so far or is it uh, you know, magical? It just, it's like a rubber band. All right. I like your idea, but I'm going to say they didn't, they probably didn't intend it that way, but see, you know, I could see like you're reading this to a little kid and they just say that and like, let's do it. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's try to, um, we can either cross the slippery bridge or go to the bottom of the moat. Moat or bridge? Thank everyone for joining us, but I appreciate uh, Stryker has been through some of these books with us before, so I like his suggestions. Cross. Let's cross the bridge. Okay, hopefully nobody falls in. All right. Um, let's go to 96. If even one hero makes it across. Okay. Each player has to roll one die. He keeps saying one dice. It's one die. Trying to score less than or equal to a speed score. Anyone who fails his roll plunges off the bridge and falls to his doom on the palings in the bottom of the moat. Survivors, if any, turn to 108. Oh, man. I hate that. That really bites. Okay. So everybody's got to roll less than or equal to their speed. This could be the end, guys. This could be the end. <laughs> if this if this fails, I'm I'm really tempted. I mean, they put us in a no-win situation. I think we should go back and try the the rope the rope trick. But uh, let me just see if anybody is going to make it. Okay, so we got the barbarian. He's got a speed of three. Oh, he made it. Okay, wizard. He made it. Ah, those those trick dice that I bought really really helped out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the elf has to get four or less. See, the dwarf doesn't have much speed. He's only got two, so he's gonna fall off. Okay. Elf. Two. Okay, he made it. Dwarf. Oh, six. He the dwarf fell. Barbarian did. <laughs> oh, man. Could I have done anything for him? 
I know it's uh, Monday morning quarterback here, but what if I forgot about the spells? What if we just said the wizard? Can he cast Swift Wind on the dwarf? I hate to just lose him just just like that. Okay, so if he if we rewind and say that he cast Swift Wind on him, that should double his movement. But let's see what it actually does in this version of the game. What does the spell Swift Wind? Because he's got air, air spells. So want to catch air. Okay, doubles one character's speed score for a single roll. Okay. So instead of two, he's got four. Okay, so uh, he still would have failed. Darn. All right, let's let's go back. <laughs> let's go back because I I know we only lost one guy, but yeah, let's okay. Let's take that uh, snake. Let's take that thing and let's stretch it like all four of us with our Herculean strength. I mean, presumably it's some immortal like magical thing. So we're stretching it as far as it'll go, and it's we're using it as a rope. <laughs> I mean, it's, I guess it's my stream. I can do what I want, but I like that. So let's go back and let's try that instead. Because, yeah, we could go on without the dwarf, but I hate to hate to do that. Okay, you arrive safely at the porch. Well, that was easy. A, star, a stout iron-bound door blocks your way with thorn bushes grown up all over it. The hinges have rusted only slightly through the years of neglect. It does not seem you would have much chance of breaking in. A glance along the walls offers no hope of entry to the windows either. Though the lights have fallen in, the stone bars are too closely set for anyone to squeeze through. With its moat and strong defenses, the place uh, could have been built to withstand a siege. Being a frontier manor house, you realize it probably was. With no way of getting inside, your adventure ends before it's hardly begun. Or is there a way? Experienced adventurers ought to be able to think of something and you don't hold your breath waiting for a clue. If you really cannot think of anything better, then you can return across the bridge and clamber down into the moat, turned 85. Okay, so I guess, so it's a waste of time. It's supposed to be hard to kill. Yeah, a snake sword wrapped him. It's hard to kill, right? Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, using using the the snake the snake sword as a rope, turning a, a negative into a positive. The, the the quest gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Okay, you clamber down the sides of the trench into the thick shadows. The bottom of the moat feels slimy underfoot, knotted with weeds. A toad croaks once, unseen in the gloom. Once, it's like something ate it. If the dwarf is still with the party, <laughs> well, he is in this version. Okay. Because we, we just said that we're using the snake rope. The dwarf is still with the party. Turn one. If the dwarf has been lost on the way here. Oh. Okay, let's go to 119. He's still with us. Still alive, old friend. You spot a secret tunnel entrance in the wall of the trench. This feature is common in isolated manor houses. An insurance allowing the occupants to escape if the manor should be besieged in time of war. You make your way through the tunnel until it widens out into a flight of stone steps. These bring you up inside the manor, where you emerge via a concealed panel below the main staircase. Turn to six. All right, these mansions and their cool secret doors and entrances, passageways. When I was a kid, I was always interested in that too, and so I could always imagine, you know, wandering around some big house. You step into the dilapidated entrance hall. Your first impression is of cobwebs and dust. The second impression is less favor favorable. Rats, startled, startled by your arrival, emit frantic squeaks and go scuttling half-glimpsed into the darkness. You gaze up the long sweep of the stairs. Under the grime of ages, a succession of nefarious faces glower from portraits in the walls. Each looks more depraved than the one before, until finally your eyes come to rest on what must be the likeness of Grim Dugald himself. You cannot even begin to imagine what twisted desires and rank indulgences could have formed these gross features. Those gross features. The hot jowls, the obscene smile, and the stare brimming with cruel delight. If the devil wore a human face, 
that would be it. You tear your gaze away despite a horrified fascination. It's like the por portrait of Dorian Gray, I guess. Off to one side below the stairs, steps lead down to the cellar. At the back of the hall is an archway. On the lintel over this is displayed Dugald's coat of arms, a raised fist in scarlet, bearing a flail on an ebon field. If you go up the stairs, go to 39. If you go through the archway, turn to 51. If you descend to the cellar, turn to 62. Okay, so up the stairs, through the archway, or down into the cellar. So the archway seems to be where his coat of arms is. I mean, where would he keep the treasure? In his office? In his cellar? Or like in his attic? Anybody have a thought? Which of those three choices should we do? Oh, yeah. So we've got our three choices there. Stairs, archway, or cellar. Let me just check the chat. We're well, thinking about our choice here. Okay, so we got five people tonight. That's not bad. I think Strange Bus is hovering around here somewhere. He's uh, working on getting his Star Wars vintage uh, gaming stream going. That's going to be exciting. That's going to be later tonight. So if any of you are on, uh, catch him on Twitch, The Strange Bus. B-U-S. Uh, cooking dinner for the kids. Yeah, got to do that. Yeah, thanks Thanks for doing that, Strange Bus. Um, I mean, I know you got to make dinner for your family, but thanks for popping, popping in. Always welcome. So, Striker, are you going to be the one who makes the decision? Put it in the basement. Yeah, that's what you would do. But what would a twisted, depraved maniac like um, this Dugald guy, this grim Dugald, what would he do? Would he put it in the basement, in the cellar? Well, it's as good a good a choice as any. So let's see. We've been in dank uh, quarters before and survived. Lived to tell the tale. Let's try it. Well, we still got the dwarf with us, thanks to your ingenuity. So if there's traps, you should be able to make it. Okay. Rickety steps. Oh, great. Lead down to a cellar whose frosty, dust-filled air almost makes you choke. You advance between racks of wine bottles whose labels date back over many years. You notice one vintage, reclining under a thick gathering of grime of over a century ago. If, we, if you wish to take one of the bottles of wine, remember to record it on your character sheet. You find a door at the back of the cellar. Beyond lies a sloping passage that seems to lead down into still deeper catacombs. The darkness returns your gaze, heavy with foreboding. But it is down there, no doubt, that you will face your destiny. Before entering the ominous passage, however, you glance back along the wine racks. You might never again get the chance to visit such a well-stocked cellar. Perhaps there's time to sample just a few goblets of one of the rare vintages. If you tarry a while to see what the wine is like, turn to 30. If you think you'd better not lose any time, descend to the catacombs, returning to 41. So now it already says that we could take one of the bottles of wine. So... <laughs> is probably his favorite place. Probably has a torture room in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a good thought, Striker. Yeah, so the idea that he'd hide the treasure in his favorite place is a uh, torture room because he's a, a evil maniac. But we can get uh, a bottle of wine. Now, if we steal his favorite vintage, he's probably going to be pissed at us. But that's how it goes, right? So let's see. Who should we give it to? Could give it to the wizard, I guess. Because I think the barbarians had enough. Now the elf has... See, the elf and the wizard each have one slot open. So is the dwarf. So somebody's going to be full. All right, I'm going to say give it to the wizard. Drinking seems like a bad idea at the moment. I agree. Well, we can take the wine with us. We can celebrate if we survive later. So I'll just say wine. All right. Yeah, I think Windows 10 has some little scratch pad deal that you can use. So I just wrote the wine in there.
Yeah. So okay, let's not uh, let's not uh, get uh, get any wine buzz going. Let's just uh, get going. Okay. Sixty-two. Yep. All right. So uh, better not lose any time. Let's go to forty-one. Speaking of time, how we're doing? Five thirty. Yeah, we've got another half hour. Uh, this is a an interesting little uh, chase. Again, this was the first Hero Quest novel, so they were still getting their bearings. They had a lot to lot to deal with. I think they probably should have written the other ones first, like the solo adventures, and then built up to the Fellowship before. But they didn't necessarily know that there'd be any more, so it's like just throw the kitchen sink at the audience. You go deep down into the earth. Finally, you emerge from the tunnel in a cave so vast that you cannot see the walls or the roof at all. A torch glimmers in a bracket on the wall beside you. If there are any mortal players left, the wizard and the barbarian, then you must take the torch, as otherwise they will be unable to see. Ah, oh, so the dwarf and the elf can see in the dark. You will have to retain it while in the catacombs as long as the barbarian and the wizard survive. The elf and the dwarf have good enough night vision not to need torchlight. Oh, is that because the two of them are in, in front? Because otherwise, the other two could lead. See, now, if they get the torch, is that going to throw off their night vision? I guess I'm thinking too hard about it. That's wizard talk, says the barbarian. <laughs> That's wizard talk. Yeah. All right, let me just uh, check Discord. I heard a couple of beeps there. Oh, it could be the, the other Discord. Yeah, thanks to everybody who joined us here on HeroQuest Fans as we do this reading. All right. So, yeah, we're taking a torch, so we're going to have to give it to somebody. I suppose we'll just give it to the barbarian. He can hold it in his other hand. Can't he use it to get uh, burn that that uh, that snake off of his hand? All right. Okay, we'll go to fifty three. You reach the edge of a subterranean lake, but the water and your surroundings are so silent and black that you almost seem to be in a void. You see only the white stone K under feet, underfoot, the gleam of torchlight on the still water, and a white lacquered rowboat tethered to a bollard on the on the K. Q U A Y. See, he likes his, his vocabulary. If anyone wants to drink some of the lake water, <laughs> decide you will do so and then turn to 65. If you get into the boat and start rowing, turn to 76. Now, why would they give us that option? Hey, guys, let's drink some of the poison. Or, oh, it gives you magical powers. I mean, we have no idea, do we? No idea. Make the snake drunk. Drink it. <laughs> See, strange boss, he just goes in feet first, head first. I mean, you might as well see. I mean, it could be something funny. All right. So, okay. So someone will decide to drink the lake water. Who who should drink it? <laughs> the barbarian who's had all the luck thus far. Make the snake drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Drown that sucker in there. Drink it. We'll see. We're so thirsty. We, we didn't drink the wine. We're trying to drink some water. All right. Let's make the snake drink it. Let's go to 65. Now, if they force us to say one of the heroes is doing it, then I guess we'll have to pick somebody. But let's see what it says here. The black water has a strange effect. If you are currently injured, your body score is restored to normal. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> um, if you're not injured, though, then you lose one body point from your body score. And this is a permanent loss. There's no way to go from here other than to climb into the boat and start rowing. So it's actually something good. Interesting. So, actually, we could heal our whole party. <laughs> and you would think we could kill the snake, too. 
I'm, I'm really tempted just to cross it off the list. I mean, you guys have given some good suggestions on how to get rid of it. So maybe they just leave it to you to be creative like that. And I'm okay with that. Unless they say, by the way, that snake is still on there and you can't get rid of him. So let's say the barbarian is, is healed. Let's get the wizard in there too, because he sees it's okay. Wasn't hurt so dead. I mean, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. It's logical. I mean, does logic work in this universe? Okay, so the elf is back up to five. I know, I could use the eraser. The dwarf's not going to have any. You guys go ahead. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to say... dead because if so then his combat is going to go back to what it was because they didn't say oh you have to designate each person beforehand it's like and you can't make the choice so yeah there's some wiggle room there all right go into the boat and start rowing 76 The oars fall almost without sound into the opaque waters. You drift out from the K, surrounded by an eerie hush. See, if we were playing the board game, all I would be doing is just rolling a die to see if, you know, 50% chance if it works or not. I know I could have done that here, but it's, it's a little quick and dirty. You know, just like even number, it succeeds. Odd number, it's, it fails. You know, but it's like you still have to take into account what, what the author actually put in here. You know, does, does he... Uh, account for that or not okay uh you've not been rowing for long when a landing stage comes in sight there's all this is also of white stone like the k you set out from it is completely surrounded by water in the middle you can see a small shrine like the shrines of pagan times consisting of a, a marble domes dome supported by pillars carved into the shape of human figures as a tasteless and gruesome embellishment the figures are depicted bound in shackles as though being stretched on a rack. Ah, see, there's your torture there. You cannot see clearly into the shrine except to tell there's something large resting on a stone altar. Something large. If you dock at the landing stage, turn to 99. If you row past in search of the far shore of the lake, turn to 111. Okay, so maybe we found his torture chamber. Should we check it out? Should we land here? Or should we keep on going? as we're rowing out into the lake. I'm kind of thinking of exploring. If you guys have any thoughts? Guys, gals, I say guys for everybody. That's just how I, that's just how I roll. I'm gonna say investigate. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay, let's go to 99. My finger there. Your hairs stand on end as you walk towards the shrine. You do not need any sixth sense to tell this is a place of great wickedness. Stepping between the pillars, you see a gray stone coffin lying on the altar stone. Unlike the rest of the shrine, the coffin is very crudely worked and deeply weathered as though it has been exposed to the elements for years. Before you can make a move towards the coffin, there's a ghastly, bubbling growl, and four figures shamble from behind the altar to attack you. They are women, chalk-white of flesh and listless of gaze, whose dark hair and robes hang lanky as though damp. Ah, they're undead brides. So the first undead bride has three combat and one body. Oh, they all have the same stats, but there's four of them. They're undead brides. There's enough room in the shrine for all players to get into melee. Survivors, survivors of the battle turn to 42. If you flee back to the boat, turn to 111. The problem with fleeing is you can take damage as you're fleeing. I think you got to roll your speed or less. Not saying we should all run. We don't. I don't know if we get anything for killing these monsters. But there's four zombie-like creatures. I think we can take them. 
I think we got enough strength to do it. But let me just check the fleeing in case we did ever want to do that. Sometimes you will be given the option of fleeing from a battle. This might seem unheroic, but many dangerous creatures abound, and discretion is sometimes a better part of valor. If you choose to flee the adventurers in the front and the second row of the party, must try to roll their speed or less on one dies. One die. Failure means the adventurer loses one body point before getting away. So only two of them have to roll. That's interesting. Let me just check the speed rating. Yeah. See you soon, Striker. Thanks for joining us. Okay. I'm not saying we will flee, but I'm just curious about how they handle it. Because everything is a little bit different with four heroes. So yeah, the order you see them is is the way we're playing. So Barbarian first, then Wizard, then Elf, then Dwarf. So it would go three and three. Now the Dwarf is the slowest, so thankfully he doesn't have to do it. But when they say second row, I guess they mean the first two. So it would have to roll three or less and then three or less. I think we should fight, personally. So they came, uh, it sounds like they had this, they got the drop on us. They surprised us. So I'm just going to say fight. Anybody has any objections? We're going to fight the undead brides. Now, if we kill these monsters, does that mean that we've got to marry whoever is, is there? <laughs> or we got to face him? Is this Manos the Hands of Fate? What, what is this? Okay, so combat of three. So the first one is attacking the barbarian. Two. So that's a hit. Oh, I should have said it. Okay, he's he's going to try to parry. Excuse me. He's trying to parry. Always parry when they're attacking. Okay. So that would have been a hit, but let's see. He gets um, one or two. Four. Okay, he didn't parry. Okay, so Barbarian loses one. Let's get the character sheets back up. There we go. So Barbarian loses one. Just made a mistake there. I thought I had the eraser, but I don't. So, seven. All right, the wizard gets attacked by the second one. Now he's going to try to parry, of course. So wizard, or this is the monster attacking the wizard. Failed, so he doesn't have to parry. Okay, the third monster is attacking the elf. He's going to try to parry. So monster rolls one would be a hit now he's going to try to parry one or two five he fails so elf takes a body point of damage so now he wasn't he wasn't healed back to full by the the healing water now he does have a healing ability he's got water of healing he can use that anytime but we're not going to use it yet Okay, and then the last monster attacks the dwarf, and he's going to try to parry. So, monster attacks. Oh, no, that's the wrong die. Sorry. Just ignore that. Monster attacks, three or less. Two. Okay. He's going to try to parry. One. Okay, so he parried, so he didn't take any damage. All right, good. I'm using the bigger purple die for the heroes and the smaller red die for the monsters. Try to keep it a little bit straight. Okay. Now, it's a hero's turn. The barbarian is attacking the first undead bride. So we're going to say that that thing on his arm is dead. So he's back to his full combat of five. It's five or less. Two. So he does a hit. So he killed the first undead bride. Boom, she's gone. Now, if PSK was, was here, he would have a cool fatality animation for that. We got three of them left. Okay, so number two, the wizard is going to attack. Now, they don't seem very strong, but he's only got a dagger. So his, com well, his combat is three, three or less. One, so he killed it. 
Uh, so that so number two is dead. Elf. Let's see. I think the elf. Yeah, he's got his sword, just his generic sword. So it's combat of four or less. One, he killed that one. The third one, and the dwarf. So far, so good. He just got to roll uh, four or less. Two. Okay, so we killed all four of the undead brides. So they're, they're history. Survivors go to 42. Well, that's us. We got like 15 minutes. Even as you approach the coffin, you smell the slaughterhouse stench rising from it. It is filled with blood. You can only pray it is not human blood. What vile monster would it would keep such a grisly thing here? With a shudder, you at last begin to guess the truth. On the altar at the base of the coffin is a large bronze key. You decide that this is certainly worth taking. Record it on someone's character sheet, even if someone else must something else must be discarded in order to carry it. If you have a vial of holy water and want to use it now, see we, we don't have any holy water. Or you set out into the boat again. Okay. So we're going to get uh, the bronze key. Let's see, who should we should give it to? Let's just give it to the elf. Who we should give it to the dwarf? I'm going to say give it to the dwarf. Bronze key. All right, going to 111. Paragraph 111, Hero Quest, Fellowship of Four in the Night Season is the name of this adventure, this game book. Book within a book. I mean, it's Fellowship of Four and then In the Night Season is the adventure that we're playing here. For anyone who missed the intro, there's the little picture. That's actually the illustration for Courage from the classic game. Which I think it's cool how the artwork is here. So if you're looking for a higher res image of some of these like spells and things, you can find it in this book. There's the short sword. There's the wizard. That's actually from Wizards of Morikar. I like the little illustrations they got going. Now in the scans that Dave Morris put on his Fabled Lands blog, um, they're just kind of generic artwork. So he probably didn't get permission to reprint those from uh, Milton Bradley, Hasbro. I'm not sure if Gary Chalk did these or not. That kind of looks like his art. Showing you some of the artwork. That's the helmet. Let's see. Oh, that's from Wizards of Morikar also. It's like Potion of Magic Resistance, I think. Is that illustration? Oh, there's the staff. That's from the European game. Equipment, staff. Cool little illustrations. And there's others, but they, they I'd be showing you spoilers if I showed you those, so we're not going to look at them yet. All right. 111. Okay. Eventually, you reach the far side of the lake. Unlike the K you set out from, this is not a man-made landing place, but a shore of white pebbles. Dragging the boat up onto the beach so that it will not drift off, you commence a search of the area. So I guess we're kind of getting there in a roundabout way. We just took some little side. Always take every side. <laughs> take every side quest. So I missed uh, Strange Bus. Okay, so yeah, um, if PSK was here, he would say, you know, the fatality was, you know, you defeat the undead uh, bride, rips out the spine, drink drinks fluids. <laughs> now it is a zombie, so that'd be pretty gross. But yeah, he does what he does. Would miss it. Okay. Quite soon you find a locked door in the back wall of the cave. It is a stout bronze-bound oak. Pressing your ear to the door so that you can you can just make out a sound like muffled sobs. If you have the bronze key and wish to use it, turn to 77. Well, so there's somebody crying inside. Well, that seems obvious. Bronze key, bronze lock. Somebody's crying. Let's let them out and see what happens. What? Oh, I totally fell for it. Okay, a host of large white bats drop down out of the darkness. They will fight to the death to prevent... Oh, to prevent you from opening the door. I was thinking like it's just a trap. To prevent you from opening the door. Proof. 
if proof you needed that something of priceless importance lies beyond it. So we got the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth bats. There's five bats. They each have a combat of two and body of one, so they're pretty weak. There's a lot of them. There's enough room for every player to get into the fight. There's no point in fleeing. They would just pursue your boat. Survivors of the fight go to 100. Okay, so there's five bats we got to keep track of. Yeah, see, this is just like the classic thing they do in so many video games where they throw the small, annoying enemies at you. It's not really a threat like you're going to lose, but it's just the frustration factor of you trying to clear them all out. Okay, so it looks like they're attacking us first. Man. So bat number one, two, three, four, and five. And they each have a combat of two. Oh, so they don't even have a very good chance of hitting us. Okay, so the first bat attacks the barbarian. He gets a one. Okay, oh yeah, and everyone's parrying. Just so you know, everyone's parrying. So I got to get a one or two. Four. Okay, so barbarian takes a hit. He's to six now. Okay. Wizard gets attacked by the second bat, and he's going to parry. Okay, it, it hits him. All right, so he's going to try to parry one or two. Three. Eh. Okay, wizard. It's like, don't I have, like, a area of effect spell? I can just blow everybody up. I mean, it's, it's such a waste to use it on these small monsters, but something that would protect everybody okay the elf is getting attacked by the third bat six okay it failed thankfully okay now the fourth bat is attacking the dwarf two i think that's a hit and he's parrying of course i said that everyone's parrying okay he parried phew okay so no damage there now there's a fifth bat it's just going to start back again so the the fifth bat is attacking the barbarian Three, it failed. Right? Because they're combat of two. Yeah. All right. Now it's the hero's turn. Okay. So the barbarian is going to attack the first bat. And he's got his full strength of five. So, of course, he hits it. He kills it. So it's dead. He hacks it into ribbons. And he, uh, he ties the ribbon in his hair, because that's what the ladies like. All right. In a manly way, of course. All right. Uh, the wizard is going to take a swing with his little dagger. He's got to get a three or less. Two. Okay, he killed the second bat. Elf is going to take a swing at the third bat. Six. Yeah, but his combat isn't six. So he failed. Let me t show you how it's done, Lottie, says the dwarf. And he's going to go with his battle axe. So he's got four combat. Okay, so he's attacking the fourth bat. Four. Okay, so we killed that one. Now there's two bats left. Okay. So monster's turn. Now the heroes are all going to try to parry again. So I think I'm doing this parrying system right. Because otherwise you'd never get a chance to attack. Like you'd defend every round and you'd never... It's like when would you not parry? Oh, when you don't have a weapon. Okay. So bat number four is going to attack the barbarian. Four. It failed. Bat number five is going to attack the wizard. Failed. Okay. All right. So back to the barbarian. Barbarian is attacking bat number four. Why am I rolling that dice? Rolling the hero's dice. Okay. Barbarian attacks bat number four. Okay. Two. Well, either way, he would have hit it and killed it. Wizard attacks bat number five. The final monster. Got a five. Oh, he failed. You have a lot more firepower with four heroes. It's true. Okay. So the elf is going to attack bat number five, the only monster he can attack three and he killed it okay so we killed all the bats not too shabby okay survivors of the fight go to 100 
two men enter, one man leaves. Okay, you unlock the door. It opens with a gravid creak to reveal a young girl cowering inside a small bear cell. My name is Perdita, and I'm from the village a few miles across the moor, she tells you. How did you come to be here, you ask? I'm not sure. On my way home, I was overtaken by dusk. Since this is... So, you actually pronounce it Samhain. So, Samhain Eve, not Sam Hain. Samhain Eve, I quickened my step. But just then I saw a tall shadow of a f I'm not using the girly voice. Okay, um I just saw a tall figure of a, a tall shadow of a figure lurking among the trees by the side of the road. I crossed over and hurried by on the other side, but I hadn't gone far before I saw the figure again, somehow ahead of me still. I began to feel very frightened then. I lost sight of the figure as I backed away down the road. Then suddenly I bumped into something large behind me, and I was seized. That's the last I remember. Realizing this is no place to hang around, you take Perdita to the boat and row back across the lake. Ascending through the cellar, you emerge into the entrance hall of the manse once more. If you were going to breathe a sigh of relief, however, then it was premature. Someone is here waiting for you. Uh-oh. Turn to 89. I assume, you know, she just went with us. We didn't just, like, stuff her in our backpack. <laughs> it's like an encumbrance. Oh, she comes along. Uh, 89. Okay, Grim Dugald stands in the gloom of the hall. He has been waiting for you. I don't know why, but I picture like Vigo, not Vigo Mortensen, but Vigo from uh, Ghostbusters 2. I, I guess he, he could look like anything, but yeah. Grim Dugald stands in the gloom of the hall. He's been waiting for you. Okay, his flesh is the color of candlelight. And other world energies have swollen his already huge frame until his head almost scrapes the rafters, his eyes, two icy pebbles in the mistletoe bush of his beard and hair, roll horribly. And as he sees you, his growl of hate is like the howl of a hanged man. Okay, so he definitely looks different than I pictured. Do you have an item you want to use? If so, turn to 112. Otherwise, turn to 123. An item. Well, let's see. What items could we use? We uh, got rid of the snake. So I guess we can't use that. Now, that would be interesting if somehow we, like, whipped it at him or something. We've got a torch. We've got a bronze key. That's probably not going to be... I mean, technically, a battle axe is an item. We could introduce him to that. <laughs> or a sword. Money pouch. We could try to bribe him, I guess. Dagger. Hey, we could offer him some wine. Like, hey, no hard feelings, buddy. How about a, how about a drink? Or just, like, crack him over the head with it or something. Well... Yeah, maybe he just he just needs a needs a little uh, sniffer. Let's try to use one of our items. Now, if it lists some items that we don't have, I guess we're just we'll be out of luck. All right, let's go to 112. Let's put the little bookmark there just in case. We're almost done with our stream for today. Again, sorry I had to cut it short, but there's other things we're going to be doing later on. So if you're interested at all in Star Wars games computer games, vintage games. You should enjoy it. Okay, which of the following will you try? A file of holy water and a bottle of wine? You need to have both items. We don't have that. File of holy water on its own. Unfortunately, we don't have that. A sprig of garlic? No. If you have none of these or don't don't think they would be of any use, turn to 123. Darn. I wonder, back to the beginning of the adventure, if that's what we would have gotten if we would have hung around with those, uh, with either the the old man who liked his drinks, or maybe the people in the village, they would have given us some trinket that we didn't think would be of any use, and now it would have been of use. I don't know. Maybe next time. Okay, so we don't have any of those. Let's just move on to the next part here. 123. It's going to just kill us all. Do you have the code word Carfax written on your character sheet? So well, give me the Carfax. No, we don't. I'm not liking this so far. Let's go to 55. If he kills us, this would be a perfect place to stop. I want to give that wine to that old man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we can make it home, you know, hey, listen, we didn't get, we didn't buy you that cheap beer, but check out this excellent vintage of wine. Right. 
55. Grim, De uh, Grim Dugald was a monster even when he was alive, but the weaknesses of the flesh have been stripped away. He's now nothing but the quintessence of evil. Looking into his ghastly corpse-lit eyes, you know that you can never expect quarter from such a foe. This is a fight to the finish. Grim Dugald, combat 6, body 18. There's room for up to three players to fight him at one time. A fourth player could, of course, cast spells at him, if any. Sounds good. If you've acquired the sword Wraith Reaver, never told us about that, inflicts double damage on this foe. That is two points per blow rather than one. Well, see, this is the final battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just joking there, but I like the joke. So, yeah, if Carfax wants to sponsor us to be our first sponsor, uh, contact um, our... Um, business manager the strange bus or contact me here on hero quest fans we don't have any actual sponsors but yeah carfax <laughs> this is a book from 1991 but i don't know maybe they were around back then maybe it was a real fax machine back then okay so this is a fight for the final guy so i think i'm just gonna say let's go over strange bus i know you got to go here shortly but um i might be a little late just because this is the final battle and i hate to miss it okay so we got to fight him. He's got combat of six. And he's got 18 body points. Well, let's, we're going to dig into the magic, first of all. I mean, we've got the drop on him. So I think we can do whatever we want at the start. So let's see. Might as well just... Okay, so the wizard is going to step aside. So he's going to be kind of like by himself and we're going to do barbarian elf dwarf but before we do anything are we going to need to heal some people i think we're going to need to do that so first yeah it looks like heal body can be used anytime water of healing can't be used in the midst of battle. So is it too late to use that? I'm going to say let's do, of course, it's your action, first of all. So I think the wizard is going to go last with his magic. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, he's going to do magic first because he's out of the combat. So let's see. Ball of flame. Strikes all enemies facing you in a given fight. Each... Oh, see, we could use ball flame on those bats. Well, it's better to use it here. Each gets a chance to avoid damage by rolling one or two. If it fails, the spell does one damage. Body point of damage. Fire of Wrath does two damage. Fire of Wrath automatically does two damage. So let's use that first. So the wizard does uh, Fire of Wrath on him. Boom! Nails him with fire. All right, thanks, Strange Bus. So he's down to 16 body points. We just, we just nailed him with some fire. Fire of Wrath. So let's uh, let's cross that one off. Keep us keep us honest. Let's see. There it is. Fire of Wrath. Not Eli Roth. Okay. Or Tim Roth. All right. Um, that was his turn. And now the Barbarian is going to attack. So he's got to get five or less. And it's the bad guy. The bad guy doesn't get to parry, so one. Okay, so he did one damage. So Grim Dugald is down to 15. I'm just keeping track here on a piece of paper. All right, the Elf attacks next. And he's just got to get four or less. Now, he does have magic. So... He could heal himself as his action. He's down to four. It would only heal him two if he used it. Of course, the monster can only... I mean, Grim Dugald can only do one body point of damage per turn anyway. He can only attack one hero. It's going to be a long fight. Let's say... If I use rock skin, it's only going to protect me for this one battle. Oh, no. Hmm. Oh, for the whole battle, not just the round. 
Okay, so the elf is gonna. Oh, but see, Grim de Gauld is only gonna get to attack the barbarian. He has to fight through the barbarian to get to everybody else, I think. Because there's no there's no extra player that decides. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna randomly attack somebody. So. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think um, he's going to use heal body on him. No, he's not. See, decisions, decisions. I think he's just going to attack. Attacking's better. So the elf is going to attack Grim Dugald, and he's got to get his uh, four or less human shield barbarian. Yeah, he totally is. He's the meat shield. All right, three. So he down to 14. 14, wow. Now the dwarf is going to go. Attacks. Four is his combat. So he's... Bad guy's down to 13 before he can could even do anything to us. Now he gets to attack. Now he rolls six or less to hit the barbarian. Six. Ah, darn. And he's parrying. He's parrying. So one or two. One. He parried it. Ha ha. Okay, now it's back to the heroes. Wizard. All right, wizard, what do you got? Let's see, he's got the genie. Could do one body point of damage automatically, just no defense. Or he could use the ball of flame. So we might need the genie for something else later. If we use the ball of flame, then he gets a chance to roll a one or two to de defeat it. So let's do ball of flame. Grim, de Grim de Gauld rolls a one or two to negate the damage. He failed, so he is down to... 12. Cross off ball of flame here. Okay. That was the wizard. Okay, barbarian is attacking. Two. Okay, so down to 11. Elf is going to attack. Two. Enemies down to 10. Dwarf attacks. Go a little quicker here. Four. Enemies down to nine. Grim de Gauld. He's attacking the barbarian. Got to get six or less. Well, there's only six sides, so he's basically guaranteed to hit. What am I saying? Five. So. Barbarian uh, is parrying. I, I always got to say, everybody's going to parry every time. Four. Ah, he failed. So Barbarian takes the hit anyway. Sorry, first time playing this. So it's an uh, interesting adventure. Only three could attack and one do spell. Striker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Striker, am I doing this wrong? So I'm having the Barbarian attack. Sorry, let me, uh, keeping me honest here. So Barbarian is attacking, Elf is attacking, Dwarf is attacking. Wizard's using spells, right? Oh, I see what you're saying. So I was talking about use, having the Elf do a spell in the middle of battle. No, if I said the wizard was attacking, I misspoke. I didn't mean to do that. Um, if I did, sorry. Not trying to cheat. But yeah, you're right. So the elf shouldn't be able to use his spells in the middle. It's just the wizard doing spells, like off to the side. So yeah. No, uh, fair question, though. I mean, it's a little bit ambiguous, but that's how I've been interpreting it. But good point. Okay, so we're at, let's see. Elf, dwarf, whose turn is it now? Is it, sorry, I lost my place. Is it the dwarf? Or is it the bad guy's turn again? Anybody? No, I should use one of those markers that keeps track of the turns. That's one nice thing about having an automated system. I, I like doing everything by hand, but yeah, if we had a good system that you weren't like fighting with the interface constantly, I actually did get Tabletop Simulator working last night, believe it or not. But I was so tired, and it took, I swear, it took like five minutes to load. But it worked, and it was like, hmm, 
okay, so now I just need to go through the tutorials and like learn all the controls, and it's like, ah, I'd rather just do this for now. All attacked. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so Grim de Gauld is attacking the Barbarian. He's got to roll six or less. Five. And Barbarian's going to try to parry. He parried. Okay, so back to the heroes now. Okay, Wizard is going to use some magic off to the side. I mean, I guess you could do it like the he does his magic after everybody has attacked already, but I'm just doing it the other way. Doing the wizard first. So he's used Ball of Flame. He's used Fire of Wrath, which work differently than they do in the board game here. He could use, let's see, what does Courage do? Cast at the start of a fight. Uh, this increases a single adventurer's combat score by one for the duration of the fight. See, I should have used that. They'll then be able to flee. It's a fight to the death. Okay, well, word to the wise next time. Use courage first. But, I mean, I've been getting some pretty good rolls. It's tempting to just use... Let's see. If I use Tempest, he can't attack for one round. Tempest on him. Sleep. Uh, I don't think he can be put to sleep because I don't think it's one of those pages. Let's see. I feel I feel like it would be cheating to look at it now, but I'm just curious if he can be put to sleep or not. Got to get that uh, bottle of wine to the old man. That's what it was. Then it'll be worth it if we can do that. Grim Dugald. Lost my place. I should have kept it. Sorry, folks. Yeah, it's like right at the end here. I uh, didn't mean to fumble it. Grim Dugald. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we're on 55. Yeah, I don't think it would work even. But we could use Tempest on him. Yeah, so let's use Tempest on him so he'll lose a turn. Okay, so um, let's just mark it here so we know. So Tempest is being used. <laughs> don't say that you'll jinx yourself yeah i'll make my own luck ain't got time to bleed all right uh so the barbarian is gonna try to attack here five or less two okay so bad guy's down to eight so now he's on our level finally elf attacks two so he, without even looking, I can tell he got a hit. So that's seven. Dwarf attacks. Six. Oh, he failed. Come on. All right. So he failed. Now, bad guy doesn't get to do his turn because Tempest is used on him. So back to the wizard. Now, I could nail him with uh, Genie. I mean, I, is it the end of the quest? Do we need it for anything? Or is, you know, do we have to escape as the place blows up? <laughs> I'm just picturing all kinds of scenarios. I, I think um, maybe this time the wizard is not going to use any magic. Just as a just as a precaution. Oh, and I forgot. He's got the earth spells, too. Yeah, so we couldn't have used sleep because that's for the... Elf. The elf has sleep, water of healing, veil of mist. So I forgot about that. Yeah, but I didn't goof it up. So, okay. So the wizard just does nothing at this point. It's like, hey, you, you got this, guys. All right, barbarian attacks. One. Scores a hit. Grim Dugal, the evil villain, is down to six. Elf attacks. See, this is the fellowship of four. This is the power of, of a team. So he got a six. He didn't, didn't score anything because it was too high. Dwarf. He was too high, man. Okay, dwarf attacks. 
Five. He failed as well. Okay, now Grim de Gauld can attack. He's attacking the Barbarian. He gets a three. Barbarian, of course, is parrying, because I said they're always parrying. One or two, uh, he didn't parry. So everybody parries. Even Tyler. So we're down to four. Four for the Barbarian. I'm going to have to heal him next round. Um, okay. All right. Now it's time for the heroes to finish this guy off. Okay. Wizard. Is the wizard is a wizard who will serve? Let's see. He could use heal body on the barbarian. Get him back up to eight. I think he's going to do that because he is the, the meat shield of the group. So barbarian's back up to eight. It's pretty messy. His heal body is used up. All right. Now the Barbarian's going to attack Grim de Gauld. And he gets a four, which works. So that's a hit. A fine hit. And so bad guy is down to five. Elf attacks. Three. That's a hit. Down to four. Dwarf attacks. One. That's a hit. Down to three. Grim de Gauld attacking. Attacking the Barbarian. Of course, he scores a hit, but he's parrying, so oh, I failed to parry. Well, good thing I healed him. So now we're down to seven again. It's my my real character sheet looks like that, except that I, I can erase it. I mean, yeah, I could, but yeah, anyway. All right, monster turn is over. Back to the heroes, right? So barbarian attacks. Five and he has five, so that's that's a hit. Bad guy's down to two. Oh, I skipped the wizard's turn. That's okay. I wasn't gonna have him use magic anyway. Um, elf attacking four. Hey, PSK, you were always lurking here. Well, welcome. Uh, now that we've seen your presence known, we're pl we're playing Fellowship of Four game book here. And we're fighting the bad guy, and we've almost got him dead to rights. Now, um, Strange Bus anticipated your fatality earlier. So um, we were fighting some uh, undead brides, some zombie women. And he said that your fatality was you were going to snap the spine and drink the fluid <laughs> out of a zombie. But, you know, I guess you're just that kind of guy. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Get the fight. Get the treasure. Okay, so the bad guy's down to two. So now who is left? Um, did the barbarian... And now we've got the elf, I think. Or is it the, the dwarf? It's either the elf or the dwarf. I'm forgetting. I think we can finish him off. Let's say it's the elf. Two. That's a hit. Down to one. Dwarf. Oh, the dwarf failed, so he's still alive. Okay. Bad guy's attacking. So Grim Dugald, the evil villain, is attacking the barbarian. It's a five. It's a, He's parrying, of course. He's going to try to parry it. One or two. Uh, we're still counting that. It was still within the box, so it's four. So that's a six. Barbarian's down to six. All right, back to the heroes. Now, the wizard could kill him with the genie but it's just not necessary so he's just hey you guys got this barbarian taking a big swing three all right killed him i think he's gonna do one of those combo attacks where he just like you know cuts him down low and then he cuts him up high <laughs> and then spins around and then does another cut and Grim de Gauld goes down. He goes down hard. If you succeed in overcoming Grim de Gauld, which we did, surviving characters turn to 78. Now, the only thing is in this adventure, we did backtrack. I mean, you could say we cheated or did a mulligan. Uh, we would have lost the dwarf. He would have fallen off a, into a pit at one point. But they just didn't give us really any options. It was like a no-win situation. 
I guess they want you to explore when you start out. You, they want you to talk to more people and find some gear that's going to come in handy later. Because we had like hardly anything compared to what they were asking us. 78. Grim de Gauld falls. The floorboards shake with the impact, which sends clouds of dust into the air. But is he truly beaten? Can you kill one who has already tasted death? Before your eyes, the strong white fingers twitch, and a growl of returning strength rises from his black maw. Quickly, before he reanimates, you must do something. The desperate struggle has left you too weary to fight on, but what alternative is there? If you open the door and race off into the night, turn to 67. If you think you have an item that might dispatch him for good, turn to 124. See, now here I'm thinking... Uh, let's see, but we did use the first suggestion with the snake, so it counts. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear you, Striker. So I mean, we used our imaginations, and I appreciate you guys doing that. Okay, so they want an item to finish this guy off. Now, they asked about garlic and holy water and all that stuff, which we don't have, which would have been nice if we'd had something like that. So should we run? I mean, we killed him once. I mean, he can't really do anything. But our whole mission is to get his treasure. So the question is, are we leaving without the treasure if we run? Or are we just hoping to get it before he comes to? I mean, we've got him down, so it's like, I don't know. If you think you have an item that might dispatch him. I mean, we could check. We could check and see what items they're talking about. All right, let's just see what items. I bet we don't have anything. Now, if, we have to, if they force us to fight him again, I'm going to be PO'd, and I'm going to say we just ran. 124. Because, I mean, he's getting back up, so we've got the element of surprise. Which item will you use? Do not take too long. Make it up your mind. As already, Grim Dugald is returning to life, or rather, to undeath. If you... Okay, Silver Dagger. We don't have it. Sword Wraith Reaver. Don't have it. Oaken Staff. Don't have it. Holy Water. Don't have it. If you don't have any of these, your only recourse is to run for it. Okay, they don't give us a choice. 67. All right. Gasping for breath, you chase in blind panic across the moors. Cold moonlight paints a maelstrom of wild fells, sucking hollows, and stunted trees, all of which hurtle past in a blur. Then, as you stagger up the side of a hillock, the distant blare of a hunting horn echoes out the distance behind you, and you hear the horrible baying of phantom hounds at your heels. If the peddler told you how he got away from Dugald's hunt, turn to 90. Oh, otherwise, turn to 101. Darn it. Oh, man. Are they going to kill us? How does it go? 101. You try to struggle on, but to no avail. Terror takes all strength from your legs, and you fall on your tracks with an exhausted groan. The hounds come sweeping down at you in a tide of evil. Their grisly panting covers you in a charnel stench. Hot breath rasps your flesh. Gory slobber scalds you, and you're too weak with fear even to look up. As they swirl about you, you hear the whinny of a horse and a short, sneering laugh of unutterable cruelty. Huge hands seize you then. And Grim de Gauld rides back home with his bag. Your adventure ends here. Oh, so we did take his treasure. But he got it back. Darn it. Okay, well, that's game over, guys. That's game over. Keep going. All right, well, I need a break. Good game, everybody. That's the Fellowship of Four. We're going to have to try it again. And I think next time we're going to do a little more exploring in the village. Because we need some more gear. So it sounds like we need to hear some stories, tips from these old codgers. You know, buy them some drinks, figure it out. Yeah, good game, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on HeroQuest Fans. We always try to do something a little different, a little more interesting. I know not everybody has read these novels, but Dave Morris, good guy uh, from the classic era of HeroQuest. This is 1991, published in the UK first. Corgi Books edition, looks like. And uh, he released all these novels for free on his blog. If the links uh, don't work, just message him. I mean, he did this for me. He just sent me the link. Just like, here you go. Anybody that needs it, give it to him. PDF. It's great. So kudos to him. And yeah, we. Uh, I don't think I've heard any more news from HeroQuest. Um, you know, usually they, they give us some news about this time of the week. But let me just let me just double check. I mean, uh, one of the things that when Elon Musk uh, bought Twitter, he's like, um, you know, Zargon needs to be unmasked. No, <laughs> just kidding. I've, I have no, no idea. Um, 
I think Twitter just just does what it does. So Hero Quest on Twitter. See, they have this guy. It's just like, oh, Zargon has taken over, and he just makes like dad jokes all day long. But occasionally there'll be some bit of news. And I'm not bringing politics in the stream. You know, I'm kidding around. Okay. Zargon. <laughs> See, I should just do a stream where I just read all of his bad jokes. It's like they like they go around the office, they get the worst the worst jokes they can think of, and then they put it on there. And it's usually in all caps. So I guess this it's like he's an old guy that uh, is using social media. Yeah. So when you look at his Twitter and there's just I don't use Twitter, but yeah, you go on there and it's just a joke. Yeah, no news. I don't think there's any Hero Quest news. If there would, he would have responded to it. So let's see if Avalon Hill has anything. Makers of the HeroQuest remake. See, back in the day, you had to wait for the TV commercial, or you had to wait for the newsletter, or you had to wait for the flyer store display. April 8th, the latest free adventure for the game system. I think this is... This is um, New beginnings. This is this is uh yeah. Okay, that's the free quest they released back in April. Okay, so no hero quest news for right now. So tomorrow, yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks for uh joining us. Uh, again, sorry we had to start late. Strange bus, the strange bus on Twitch and also on YouTube as well. He is gonna be doing a uh video game stream, and I'm gonna be joining him in a second here. Uh Triv and Gordakarn. On Discord have been helping us out trying to troubleshoot these old uh, Star Wars games, Jedi Knight, Dark Forces 2, um, Mysteries of the Sith, which was the expansion, uh, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, and Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Uh, the last one is the one I played probably the most actually over the years, but Dark Forces 2, Jedi Knight is an absolute classic. I love that game. Played it for three and a half years. I haven't played in so long though, I'm sure I'm rusty as dirt. So if you guys want to kick me around, uh, for a bit, um, that's that'd be fine. I love those games. If we, there's just a lot of troubleshooting that goes into it. So it's Strange Bus's show, but I'm gonna see if I can join him from that. So the plan is, I will try to stream at least part of that time around 9 p.m. Central Time. But definitely check out the Strange Bus. Um, I know it's not Hero Quest related, but it is. Um, I mean, Star Wars, especially from that classic year of Star Wars. You know, late 1997 up to early to, uh, 2003. Pretty awesome time to be a Star Wars gamer. So anyway, thanks for joining us in HeroQuest fans. Um, we'll definitely have to play this one again. Um, we definitely have some clue on how, what choices to make next time to ensure victory. But it was fun. It was fun doing it. All right. So yeah, no stream for HeroQuest fans tomorrow, I don't think. Uh, we do have Mother's Day coming up. So kudos to all your mothers out there all the stuff you did for us and, you know, putting up with <laughs> all of our stuff. So if you've got a mother out there or a mother figure, um, give them a shout out, show them some love. Everybody take care. All right. Thanks for joining us in HeroQuest fans. Bye for now.